Well, hello, fellow leggers. It's great to see you again, whether you're new around here or an old face coming back for more. Thank you. You're joining us at the Almeida. Where there's a big duck. There is a big duck, but I think the question is whether it be a graceful swan or duck a l'orange tonight. And that is because we are seeing the wild duck. Yeah, um, brand new production by Robert Ike. So stick around and find out how many stars. Whether it's break a leg or leg it. So our major theatre is one of our favourite theatres, although it has been a bit of a big mixed bag. Yeah, some I mean, it's, it's either really good, it's really some, amazing. It, yeah, or it's had some, I mean, talking about the other ducks, it's had a few turkeys, to be honest, recently. But we still come back for more because... We're the, always optimistic. We are optimistic and the quality tends to be quite good. And talking of quality, there's some really good ingredients in this one. Yeah, especially with the director adapter, Robert Icke. So he's staging a new version of Ibsen's classic, The Wild Duck which he's adapted himself, much like he did with his other shows like Aristea yep. and Mary Stewart. So yep. he seems to know what he's doing. Um, before we were Leggers, we saw another Ibsen play, Ghost with, Ghosts with Leslie Manville, which we was did. good. And one of our earlier reviews was Hedda Gabler, yes. which we caught at the National Theatre. Yeah, it wasn't which was fantastic. Robert Icke, it was Ivo Van Hove, but it was great. He was Ibsen, so we, it was good. I think we like Ibsen. I think we do. I hope we like Ibsen. Because do you like Ibsen? Yeah, let us know down below. Have you ever seen a Nibson? Did you catch Hedda Garblet? Went out on tour, so maybe you did. We'd love What's to know. What's your experience with one and I? Yeah. Um, Ike goes meta theatre. Which with, means? It's sort of self-knowing with okay. this new adaptation. And it's a tragy comedy about a family with a son returning from a self-imposed exile. I love a family drama. Okay. Get around the table. Do you know what? There's nothing more dysfunctional than family. And it makes for a great topic. And I'm looking forward to see what he does with this. Um, I'm also excited because it's Bunny Christie. Yeah, designer. designer which, uh, who we worship. Company. Company. Red Love Barn. You. Heisenberg. Yeah. In terms All of the greats, my darling. Julius Caesar. Yeah. Great. She's, she's just she's, great. She's on top of her game. We love her. So we'll be catching up with you later. There is an interval. So stick around for our 30 second interval breakdown. And also hang around to hear our end of show thoughts and how many stars we've come to the interval which means it's time for the breaker leggers 30, 30 second interval, interval breakdown so what do you think do you know what? I like it. Um, it's storytelling and it's most basic, but the actual story itself is really interesting and slowly um, revealing and unwrap unwrapping itself. I think the performances are very strong. Um, at the moment, I really care and I'm interested. How about you? Yeah, I mean, it's part university lecture. It's almost dissecting of the text itself. If anything, for me, it's a smidgen too long. I'd like to take a bit of a knife to it, but generally I'm engaged. I'm enjoying the piece. It's dynamic. And um, it's nice weather for ducks. Talking of ducks. Talking of ducks. <laughs> it's absolutely raining cats and dogs. <laughs> and ducks. ducks. Um, so we've come to the end. It was, uh, I think, two hours and 30 minutes. It was minutes long. Plus well, it's three interval. hours now and we've only been out for 10 minutes. So it's, it's a long piece. No, I don't mind long pieces as long as they're very good. Yeah, I agree. I don't think there's a problem with length. Um, as long as it's worth it and it has the, you know, overall, it's it's fine. And it was. Um, so, now that we are at the end, um, what did you think of The Wild Duck? I was unmoved going into the interval. I mean, I wasn't, really? I wasn't not enjoying it. I thought it was fine for what it was. But what this really is, is a play of two halves. And... Come the end of Act Two, I would go so far to say as this is as that this is some of the most magnificent theatre I have seen this year. And it's come late in the year because it's November now. But my God, this is Robert Ike at his best. Finally giving us a piece without a shower door, which is lovely. But yes, I, I I'm going to struggle to find fault in its completeness because it is incomplete. Come interval which I suppose it should be right like if a show is complete at the interval then what's the point in it may uh, as well be one act I come the end I actually thought this this was an absolute masterpiece I think it's an absolute masterpiece in its writing mm -hmm. oh my goodness he's so 
good. And who's he you're talking about? Because we've got two writers here. Right, okay, so in the first place, Ibsen. I think we've seen enough Ibsen now to know that he really does understand human beings. It sounds yes. strange, but human nature, what makes humans tick, what the complexity and more of baggage and experience. Yeah, not and how... just their complexities, but their flaws. I feel like he doesn't, he understands that people aren't perfect and doesn't try and portray anybody as as a complete and, you know, undamaged soul. And that is amazing. It, it's you know. just how he unravels, how he, he shows us these characters now that become more complex and how what drives them and how individual we all are. He just really can unpick that. A sense of drama is absolutely fantastic. So I guess him, because that's the core material that Mr. Ike has been working with. Mm -hmm. I think Ike is also a genius. I can see what he's been doing here. He tells echoes of how the wild duck is almost... I'm, I'm trying to see if I don't know the, the original Wild Duck. You don't know the text. No, so. but it seems to be saying that there was hypocrisy on the part of um, Mr. Ibsen in that he too had a child that at the age of 13 it was an illegitimate child and he stopped um, funding, supporting, supporting that child, the child. Or acknowledging that child in any way. And that is kind of what the story of the Wild Duck is about. Um, yeah. And it's, it's interesting that he flipped that on its head when the whole piece is about truth and um, trying to reveal and hold on to your integrity when actually Ibsen was a, a hypocrite in that sense. So and it's really interesting what Mr. Iger's done and using the microphone as a concept mm -hmm. to uh, relay that. It, it's just Directly inspired. to the audience and to sort of open up a, di a conversation, you know, a dialogue between the cast and the audience in such an Ob a really sort of obtuse and very kind of um, just transparent manner which is a, a, like you say a genius move now there are comparisons here I feel with the way that um, the inheritance deals with Howard End and yep. I felt that, I see that with the writer of that piece being a character that is then criticised and actually the integrity of that character of mm -hmm. that person historically called into question which worked really well in The Inheritance there and works really, yeah. really well here. But it, it is something that we've seen quite recently, which I think is quite um, unusual. Um, it's almost a piece, come the end, I was so emotionally involved. I could have cried. My heart come the was end. quickly. Yep. I was really emotional. I was really emotional. And I did I feel myself coming. on the verge of, of tears. Did I you? felt myself, I had wow moments, you know, I had these breathlessness seconds of So emotionally just, involved. Yeah, being totally and utterly absorbed. And invested. And let's move on slightly away from story onto cast now because those things could not have happened for me if it hadn't have been the fact that we were being delivered this story by an unbelievably strong totally all-round amazing cast. First and foremost, Nicholas Ferrell playing the role of Francis Ekdal. Um, he, well, he has a great voice to start with. I think the guy could say anything and I would believe it. He's such a, a way with text mm. and just so soothing. But plays, um, I mean, th th these characters are also, they're not just, these actors are not playing the characters all the time they're sometimes playing the actor playing the character yeah. which is so meta and so self-aware but I fully thoroughly believed um, both sides of him both sides of what he was doing and he plays drunk really well he plays humor very well as well the, a lot of the okay. comic moments came from him and I really enjoyed his performance who yep, else did you I like? I agree um, well we may as well go through the list because everyone was absolutely fantastic I thought Nicholas Day was absolutely brilliant as well in the role um, of Charles in the role of Charles yeah, quite a small part as well it but is... actually pivotal he's but his I mean, part is probably the most important in the piece but all of his scenes were so good mm. I was hanging on the longing and the regret with the son and the, the battling with the history it was all present and there in the eyes and his being and in the detachment so good it was alright then mate yeah it, it was alright if I had to pick a star performer for this piece and I really don't want to have to because they're all bloody because they are bloody, all bloody, bloody great, amazing I think it may well be Lindsay Marshall Lindsay Marshall um, yes what a gift you know what I think with Hedda Garbler and with this could it be that he was ahead of his time in strong writing for women Oh my god, the female roles are so strong. These female roles are unbelievable. We don't get that lucky with modern day playwrights, never mind somebody of his no. time. And gosh, the drama is immense. Mm. The drama is immense. The stakes are very high for the her. The stakes are... Oh. And I really 
felt her performance, I felt her vulnerability and her desperation and her really sort of wantingness, a wantingness to be a great wife and yeah. a great mother. Just a great female part and well, so well played. A standout for me, an absolute masterpiece. Um, I've got to say as well, Kevin Harvey. Yeah. Um, in the role of. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Gregory Woods. Yes. He, the kind of, he has to hold on, he believes he has to tell the truth. Mm. And he asks such a good question. You know what that's About the it. pain that. What do you damage in the search for truth yeah. or giving truth? It seems like a good idea, to be honest, but how much pain and destruction comes with that? It's that age-old adage of what is better, a lie that heals or a truth that wounds? And it asks that question really strongly. Um, you know, I, I'm all about truth, but I mean, for as long as there are things to protect in the world then occasionally you will fall into that sort of downward spiral of lying and he really portrays that the truth of and that asks yeah. that question really strongly there is a young girl in the piece as well and as with child actors they don't play this um, you they don't get rotate. the same girl at every performance but we will I felt we were really lucky tonight I'm not seeing the other one but my goodness can you believe that girl is a child Clara Reed yes in the role of Hedwig Ekdal she was phenomenal. Now, what like, a role! I don't as have well. any. I can't. I cannot get over how good she is. Like, uh, it's a big ask of her. Like, she carries the piece in a lot of ways, and it's about her. And she, in many ways, is the wild duck, and she's wounded and wants to. So many people are the wild duck. They are, way. but I feel like she, more than anything, and she takes to heart the responsibilities that the wild duck has. I mean, they say within the piece, when a duck, a wild duck, is injured, it will swim down and kill itself in order to sort of because he is aware that it is a problem and she becomes that, inhabits that and hearing those words mean so much to her impressionability of a child is what she played well for me you have careful the things you say children will listen um, any other characters we want to talk about? I mean they're all fantastic but anybody you want let's to bring mention, out specifically? Let's mention Edward Hogg okay. in the role of Edward Hogg in the a role of James Ekdal. James Ekdal. There's a James and a Gregory, that's confusing. But James Ekdal. Um, he was very dynamic. He, he had, he has, completely different by the end of the piece. Yeah, he has a lot of baggage. He's a very tormented soul and he's up and he's down and twisted. I mean, you talk about journeys. The journeys everybody goes on. Everybody goes on in this piece are phenomenal. Um, what did you think of him? Loved him. I really loved him. I loved his. I loved his characterization as a clown, as a dad that just wants to have fun with his kids, that wants to protect him. To having this shocking revelation that everything you think you've built your life upon is now a lie, and everything that you've held true and dear and worked for is actually not worth it to you suddenly, and having the rug pulled out there's a rug in this having it pulled out from underneath your feet and I really sympathized with him as a as an actor well as a character I sympathize with a lot a lot him. of echoes that resonate so good in the writing mm. have we said the writing is good I don't I'm know not if we sure we've mentioned that let's turn um, to Let's oh, talk about direction. Okay. I was going to say, so we talk about Robert Icke and his uh, um, adaptation mm -hmm. in how he's adapted it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought his direction was inspired too. I would agree. I have lamented the fact that I felt like we've seen it all from Icke in, in previous productions, but it's he's actually gone different. to show that it, we haven't, and he still has strings left to his bow, I which think, is a surprise um, for me. There, there is things I have seen um, in this and Mary Stewart as well that he has recreated, but in the right way, and that is those real heightened moments of emotion or feeling or interactions with people at the real height he really examines them and drills into what that is physically and how that relationship, um, it really stood out to me in Aristea. There's almost like a fight where they fought each other because she was mad at him. And I, I felt the same echoes in this. He's really workshop with the actors really well to understand what is that core emotion, what intensity is it, and how is that going to affect you as actors 
in the moment on stage and that is such good direction and working with this cast. And we're talking about things that we've seen before of Ivor. Like I say, I think there are new things here. What isn't new is his trademark use of music and letting a song sit yeah. really well. He, what he does is he lets yeah. a song play and he really relishes in music and I love his decisions with that. Um, Bunny Christie in terms of set. Well, I was thinking, come the interval, it's not much. Why going is she on. bothered? Like, why has she got her name on this? Things open up in the second act. We won't say more than that. So don't no, want to spoil it, it, it in case you see but it. Come but the end. Hold on. Took my breath away. Um, and mine. You know, so I the, felt genuinely breathless the by the timing that. of it. It's yeah. Almost yeah. As if it, 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 give away. The moment it, it took my breath away. So Bunny Christie once again, in terms of vision and tying that into what the piece is saying and yeah. how it can amplify the story. Beautiful, and it was. Don't say any more. I'm just saying it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Okay. Um, anybody else? Anything else? Lighting was nice. Lighting was good. Um, which was done by Elliot Griggs. Well done, Elliot Griggs. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. Okay, let's wrap it up. I guess you're probably wondering how many legs we are going to give the Wild Duck, playing here currently at the Almeida Theatre. Oh, the lights, guys. <laughs> Don't look at don't go towards the light. <laughs> we are going to give five. five stars for this piece. It's worth every single one of them. Yeah, oh absolutely. But come the end, I, I can say going into the interval, I did think mm, there, but I was on board but, come the interval. But I loved it. For me, it 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 just paid off magnificently. Those moments of unsureness that I had in Act 1 were totally put to bed in Act 2. And I got it, and I know why we got there the way that we did. I hope this has another life. I hope mm. that people get to see this. Um, there have been a lot of walkouts, surprisingly really? so. People are leaving what, this show. The, it's not been... At the end? No, it... The interval. Mean? At the end. Well, yeah, I hope they go home at the end. <laughs> I mean, unless so, they're still in well, there, it's the same this audience. This is more for them. Yeah. Because you know, what? I liked the, the way the first act moved along, and it just crescendoed in the second act. So it's a, as you say, it's a piece of two halves. Hmm. The first act is all to, almost just the, the foundations that they then lay for us to build this beautiful structure and to really draw you in. That's just what we think. It's just what I think. What do you think? Um, let us know if you've seen it below. Let us know if you saw the first act or both acts. I mean, who knows? And also, how, if you have, how different is this to The Wild Duck? We, yeah, we only know this another version. version. I, I'm very interested to I know. I would see another version now based yeah, on this. But know. yeah, let us know down below. We're the Breaker Leggers, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.